there YouTube hunters. Mike Lawley here with the new hatchet. That's my buddy Mike who runs a pirate themed haunt about 15 minutes away from my house. And he had asked me uh, for some help making a hatchet to hang on his belt on his pirate costume. So he came on over, we had a few beers, and I made this little thing out of basically a, a hammer handle from the hardware store, some sheet styrene to form the blade, and then built up sort of that fat part of the metal that wraps around the handle with epoxy sculpt. Painted the whole thing up, stained the handle, blah blah blah. There it is. Now onto the skull mold that I posted in the Haunters Hangout group and the Canadian Haunters Association page and has attracted some interest. I stressed uh, when I posted the mold picture originally that this method that I used, I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend. Um, the Hollywood Haunter uh, five part tutorial that they posted about how to do a mold, I believe that's called a matrix mold. Um, I think that's a much better way to do it. The reason I didn't do it that way is that I had already bought the kind of silicone, which was a brush-on silicone, um, that I used uh, before I saw their tutorial. The theirs requires a pourable silicone, so I, I went a different way. I made a two-part brush-on silicone mold of the top portion of the skull only, but I'll try and quickly walk you through the steps. But keep in mind, there are other, perhaps better ways to do it. So first things first, you have to start with the skull. I really like the Lindbergh skull, as do many others. I uh, glued on all the different parts, then I used, to me, a modeling putty, just to fill in the gaps, sanded it back down, and, you know, of course you have to trim off all the flashing, and then you build up, using clay, all the undercuts you see in the eyes and under the nose, and actually behind the teeth, you basically want to eliminate places where the silicone mold would get too thin or would cut in, in underneath things too severely and would give you a weak mold or a mold that you couldn't get off or would produce a final cast piece that was, was too thin in sections that would snap off. So I strengthened up under the nose. Then I basically set it into a clay bed. I use oil-based clay. I just, I don't, I don't really dig on water-based clay. I know a lot of people prefer it and that's totally fine. Basically so that I could get the mold kind of divided equally in half. Then you make these registration keys. I use both positive and negative keys here, uh, so, uh, just out of clay and then it poke holes down into, um, so that when you brush the silicone on, that there's a pattern that the two sides will lock together. And then I made a channel around the outside and that's eventually where the plastic paste would have its registration key. Um, so basically what you do is you build up, you brush on the silicone, this is Rebound 25. First a very s fine detail coat, and then you start bulking it on top of that. There, again, you're gonna have to watch lots of tutorials on how to do this to get a sense. This is just a very quick overview. Once I had built it up enough, I uh, trimmed around to how far out I wanted the silicone to go, and then I put re registration keys into the sil silicone itself so that when I put the mother mold on top, that the silicone and the uh, mother mold will lock into one another as well. So I used plastic paste. Um, it's basically another fiber filled two part resin and uh, you trowel that on there and then it hardens into a very hard uh, plastic that you can drill into, you can sand, you can do a number of things with. So that's the first half of the mold, then I flipped it over, removed all the clay. You can see now underneath the clay where how I had kind of strengthened up behind those teeth so that my final cast piece wouldn't have really thin teeth that would snap off. And now you can see the result of those registration keys. I pulled all the clay out of there and um, you know I did a little bit of a messy job here but you can see how that helps it all lock in. So you release the whole thing with um, the proper release agents. You're gonna have to research all this stuff. Then I added a, a couple of clay pieces at the top just to have pry points to help separate the plastic paste at the end. I, this is a trick I learned from Alan Hopps, Still Be Studios. And then I uh, glued in a little piece of PVC so that I could form the negative space of the pour spout that I was going to make. You need a way to actually pour the foam into the final mold. So, so once again, started building up silicone, brushing it on, and then I did the same with plastic paste, which I don't have a picture here. And then, you know, basically you clean the whole thing up, separate it, and this is what you've got. This is the finished mold. It's a two-piece mold. It goes together really well. Thankfully, everything's all, you know, those registration keys are pretty tight so you can lock the silicone into the two different sides of the plastic paste mother mold and then just push the two um, mother mold pieces together and it lines right up. You can see I drilled little holes all around the mother mold and that's so that I can attach bolts with wing nuts together so that when I'm pouring, 
the pressure exerted by the expanding foam does not force the sides apart. I used Foam at 5. I'm going to experiment with other materials, but it produces a very dense, hard skull. I haven't really cleaned this one up as much as I need to, but uh, you know, you can take a look at it around and some of the detail. So anyways, for all the people who have been asking how to do this themselves, some quick recommendations. Watch the Hollywood Haunter tutorial. Uh, Alan Hobbs has a lot of mold making tutorials, but my uh, specific recommendation is to subscribe to uh, Bitty Mold Supply, B-I-T-Y Mold Supply, and they are on YouTube. They're very, very helpful videos. They're very informative videos. Uh, I basically spent a year watching mold making tutorials before I worked up the sack to make one myself. They're not that hard, but there are steps that you do need to know. You do need to use the right materials. Just read up on it and you can be making your own skulls in no time. So thanks again so much for watching the video, checking out my channel. Please like, subscribe, and share, and all that nonsense. And happy haunting.